Hi, it's Kevin Raver here at Photo PXL, and uh, we are here today uh, talking to somebody I've known for a long time, but haven't really known that well. I've known his work for quite a long time, um, QT or Tuan, as he's called. And we're going to talk about two book projects he's working on and has done. Uh, one is Treasured Lands, which um, this is an amazing book. It's uh, personalized, signed by him. It goes in this beautiful slip cover. And it's about uh, all the national parks in, in America. And uh, it's for a photographer like myself and probably like all of you, it's a, a great reference book for each national park because you not only see the beautiful photography that was taken, but you get a description of each shot as well as the location in the park where it was shot. So, um, you know, as you're scouting around and trying to uh, take pictures, maybe on a limited time budget or something there, uh, you've got a good head start there. But uh, this is a massive project. Knowing what it takes to do something like this, um, I can't believe it. So we're going to cut right in here. And uh, QT, tell me a little bit about things. First off, how did you get started in photography? Did you have a, a job and it was a hobby or because uh, you you mastered this quite well? Well, what what brought me into photography, it, it was the mountains. So, so I, I grew up as a city kid. And then when I was in my 20s, friends from the from college took me up the high peak of the Alps. And the reason I took photography, it was to bring back to the folks at home who couldn't see it, the beauty of the high peaks of the Alps. So that was uh, that was in uh, in the 80s. So was that, you know, where were you living at that time? I was living in France, in Paris. And so what brought you to America? Well, after I finished my, my PhD, you know, I, w I was I was curious about this country, you know, it's uh, it's a very dominant country, a very dominant culture, you know, and so so I wanted to see up close how, how it was to live in America. And so I, I applied for, for a job here. So that's I came here out of curiosity. Yeah. And at that time, it I didn't have the national parks in mind, actually. So your PhD is in what, if I can ask? Yeah, it was in computer science. So I was working in, in artificial intelligence and spe specifically in, in computer vision, you know, trying to, to teach the computers how to see. Wow. And so I came to, to California to, to work at the University of California at Berkeley. I worked on the first self-driving car project in California. Well, we might have to have a whole nother discussion about AI and where it's going in uh, photography, post-processing wise and stuff sometime soon. It's, uh, it's, I think it's a game changer coming up and it would be nice to, you know, I don't want to go off topic now, but I'd love to hear your opinions of all that. That's, that's pretty cool. You were ahead of your time. When I compare what's being done commercially, you know, and what we were able to do in the most advanced research world, research labs of the world at that time, you know, the, the, the difference is, is amazing, I must say. During your spare time on weekends or something, you must have picked up a camera and decided to go out and start exploring. Well, so, so, so back then, all my weekends, I would spend them in the mountains, but, uh, but I started to, to, to try to, to capture the mountain, you know, like for, for the folks who couldn't be there. And at first it was about documenting my climbs. And after that, at one point, uh, a friend gave me the, the book of Gan Rowell, you know, um, uh -huh. light. And then I realized that the type of photography that I did, you know, it could be elevated to an art form. And I, I became a bit more serious about photography itself too. Somewhere you got the idea to, to, to start visiting the national parks with your camera. Uh, and did you think when you started visiting that that it was going to turn into a, a book project? After after I came to, to America, I, I started to visit a few national parks. So first Yosemite, then um, Denali, then Death Valley, and I was really mesmerized by the the diversity that could be found in the national park. So that's when I got the idea to try to to visit them all of them. And that was for me, it was because I, I wanted to, to see all that diversity. So after I came to America also, I, I began to learn about the, the, the American landscape photography tradition, which is much stronger than in Europe, where we, we are mostly into humanist, um, humanist photography, you know, Cartier-Bresson and all this tradition, all this tradition. And so I, so, so I, I, I began to look into the, the work of, uh, 
of Elliot Porter and Cell Adams. Uh, I, I, I visited the, the museums here in San Francisco. I saw some of his prints. They were the most beautiful I've ever seen. And then I, I, I began to try to, uh, to work the way he did by using the large format camera. On my first visit to Del Valley, I made one of my first pictures with, with a large format camera. And I was amazed to see that when I, when I looked at the transparency, there was more details than, when, than I could see at the scene. And so that, that, that thing, a large format photography, and then my desire to see the, the diversity of the National Park, it prompted me to embark on that project to try to photograph each of the national parks in large format. Instead of coming back to, to, to France, you know, I, I made my home here in, in the San Francisco Bay Area so that I could pursue the project. Yeah. So yeah. That, I was still working at, uh, as a researcher, actually, and, uh, and I was doing that, you know, kind of in my spare time. One of the reasons why, why I, I took a, a job in, uh, in academia instead of in a company like uh, Google or what's not, was that uh, I would have more spare time, you know, and, uh, and uh, I eventually end up, uh, ended up working um, uh, part-time, you know, in photography uh, and, um, and the national parks and, um, and research. And eventually in, in 2007, I, I left my job as a, as a scientific researcher to become a full-time photographer. Um, so when you go out to do these uh, parks, are you camping or going to hotels? Where how do, you, do you fly or do you drive? How, how are you, you know, getting in and handling the logistics of, of going to each of these places? I never go into hotels. Um, for, first, I, I was trying to, 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 to do that project on, on, a, on a budget, you know, because at first it, it was a hobby, so it, it didn't seem wanted to spend a lot of money. And, and second, I, I feel that when, when you stay in hotels, sometimes you, you're, you're, you're too far, so you have to, you have to drive into sure. the park. It takes some time. And the, but the, the most important is that I feel that when I camp in the park, you know, in, in, in a tent outside, I'm, I'm more connected with, uh, with nature. Okay. And it, it does play a role in my work. Now, as you started working on this project, you got to a point where you decided you were going to make this book. Did you think this book was going to turn out as big as it was? Because it's huge. It's a, you know, that's a that's a piece of work. At the start, actually, of the project, you know, I, I didn't think about doing a book. I, I didn't think I was I was that good a photographer, anyways. You know, compared to the works that that I'd seen. But by the by the early 2000s, I visited each of the major parks and then I'd seen the other books that were out there, you know, and I, I saw that they, they didn't do justice to the, to the diversity which is in the park. And the other problem with the other books is that, you know, you, 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 you see a lot of photos of the big parks that everybody knows, you know, Yellowstone, you see. Right. But you, 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 you don't see many photos of the lesser known parks, you know, for instance, Lassen Volcanic here in Canada, yeah. not even to mention the Alaska parks. But those, they are, I found them as beautiful and as fascinating as the big parks. And so, so I saw that there was maybe a, a book which was needed to bring a bit to the fore, you know, those lesser known of the National Park Service. And so that meant trying to, to give to each park the same weight. And so that means necessarily indeed a, a big book. And that was that was actually a problem. You, you've got, so, so the, the, the viewers understand this, you, you've got a map in for each park. So if you look at each park, you get a, a page or two of pictures or, or more, you get a description of the park, a map, and you get a, a description of each photograph that you did in, in um, you know, say photographer's page here, which talks a little bit about the location and so forth. And your maps actually include the location. I mean, this that's a lot of data and work to put together to be able to, to, to do something like that. So, I mean, this is on a scale of a project um, intense, to say the least, and really appreciate it when you look at this book. I mean, you can look at this book for ages and see new things each time I, I look at it. So I don't know how you kept that all together. And then you had to like, put it all together and figure out how and what order it was going to go in. Did you have help doing that? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, when I decided to, to do the book, at first I looked for a publisher, you know, but it, it was a very ambitious project and no, nobody wanted to publish it. So eventually I, I decided to do myself. But then I realized that I, I didn't really have, the, I would say, the, the expertise to, to, to put out a very good book, you know, and I had a few dummies, you know, draft that, that I circulated among photographers and designers. Mm -hmm. and they told me, oh, this, this is not good enough. It can be better. And so I decided to, to work with a, with a publisher in a, in, a, in a hybrid way, in the sense that I, would, I, I paid for the entire project, you know, and so the, the printing, the, the design time, the, the editorial time. But then I had a, had a professional um, art designer work with me and and it turns out that I, I was lucky because I think he's he's probably one of the best book designers in in America and, and as you, see, you can see this is a, a, a masterpiece book is it's available from your website but can you get it on Amazon or something too it's a book which is widely distributed you know and uh, one of my goal with in making it you know is was to make a statement about the park and try to be as helpful as to many as many people as possible, you know. And it, it's not something that you would do by by just selling the books to your followers. So I, I really tried to aim for for wide distribution, and that's well, that's been my my model. Yes. So far, I, I've sold close to to thirty thousand copies, you know? and I I think when it's done, I think it 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 will rank among the probably the best-selling books for photography. Uh, well, it's an excellent book and I highly recommend it. Uh, in the article on our webpage, we'll uh, uh, definitely put links on how to, to get a hold of this. But um, let's, uh, what everybody's gonna wanna know if I don't ask you, what equipment are you using? Or did you work analog and then switch to digital? Or where are you with things right now? And how did that go? The project, it originated with large format photography. Right. And so, so at the beginning, I, I worked in, in large format film. I used five by seven. And I also used a 35 millimeter at the same time, you know, for, for shots that I thought wouldn't warrant large format or couldn't be done in large format. When digital appeared, actually, I was actually one of the first to, to switch to digital. If you, if you remember back then, the, the cameras, they, they, they were the, the first full frame cameras, they, they were the canons, right? The, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the one D series, you know, and those they they, they cost eight thousand dollars. I know. <laughs> had sixteen megapixel, right? So, yeah. so I had, had one of those, and and it was it was um, uh, something new for me because it allowed me to do night photography. You couldn't do that with film because film yeah. was not sensitive enough and it, it opened a new world. So, so I was immediately interested in digital photography for that reason. What are you working with today? What's your digital camera for today? So, so nowadays I, I work almost exclusively in digital, you know, so I, I still actually have my, my large format camera, but I pull it out only when there's a new national park. Uh -huh. Like 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 last uh, last year we, we we had the new River Gorge National Park in in West Virginia. So I came with my large format camera because I I felt that for for project continuity, you know, I I I, I needed to, to, to do it since since I started it. But uh, these days I I work mostly with the Sony. So I have I have an A seven R four. I have that. That's an amazing camera. That's um. The files coming off of that are very impressive and having worked for phase one and knowing what large files are like, you know, uh, the Sony's pretty impressive and the versatility that the lenses offer and so forth allow you to do a lot with that camera. I'm, I'm, and I now have the A1 also, which I think is just an amazing camera. It's one of the finest cameras I've owned. So you are moving into a new book project or you have moved into it. So. You decided to, to go from national parks to the national monuments. So tell us a little bit about that idea, how that transpired. And uh, what do you have, 27 of those or? Well, actually, you know, it's not, it's not like I moved into it. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I have the books in, in my hands here and it's- uh, It's another one of those, like, another one of those heavy books you made, holy cow. Well, well it's kind of reasonable compared to Treasured Lands, you know, it's, yeah. it's only slightly more than, uh, 
than, than 300 pages. So the national monuments, you know, first I think this total of them is, is about 130, but, but this book has only a subset of them. So first I think for just a, just a word about uh, the national monuments because I think many people don't really understand what they are and when you when you say that word they they think maybe the Statue of Liberty or mm -hmm. some statues on the mall or, or what's not right so national monuments they are they are actually similar to national parks in the sense that they are federally protected areas okay and they can encompass anything from from indeed uh, a building, you know, to an area which is uh, which is larger than the, than the largest of the national parks, and uh, about a half of our national parks actually were first protected as national monuments. So the the main difference is administrative. So the Congress designates the national parks, but Congress takes a long time to debate, you know, and from yeah. time to time. We, we, we need some more expedited protection. And so there was a law that was passed in, uh, in 1906, which is called the, the Antiquity Acts. It allows uh, the president to, to designate a national monument just with a signature. So we just, uh, so just executive order and, and we are done. And so actually that's how, how the, the Grand Canyon for, was first protected because uh, Congress had been talking about protect, protecting it for decades, but no, no, nobody had been done. So boom, Theodore Roosevelt comes and national monument. And then after that, eventually it became a national park. So the, the, the origin of the project, uh, it comes from, uh, from, the, um, uh, from the Trump's review of 2017. Okay, so, so in, in 2017, um, he, he, he ordered a review of 27 nation monuments, and those were um, among the, the recent monuments, that, the ones that he thought they, 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 they might be too large or something. And the, the goal of the review was to see if uh, presidents had abused their authority by designating such large monuments, and if we would be better by opening them for, for development. So that's where the, the list of the 27 national monuments in the book comes from. It wasn't an, an empty threat of just, a, of just a review in the sense that um, in December 2017, um, he, he ordered two of, the, two of the most interesting and the most beautiful national monuments shrunk. So those they were, they were Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in Utah and Bear Ears National Monument in Utah. And so after the, that happened, I, I, was, I, was, I was feeling really dismayed and I thought that I had to do something. And, and the, the only way I, I could do something myself, it was to try to, to, to visit those monuments and try to photograph them. And from the start, I, I envisioned to, to do a book to, to try to, to bring more awareness to those lands. Well, it looks like you're certainly going to bring the awareness um, of you know, these monuments. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing the book and you know, getting a chance to, to share it with the readers. Um, but once again, that, it was a project and you went through the same bookmaking project and did you use the same publisher and, and so forth this time around? I just uh, set up a publishing company, which is oh. called which is called the Terra Galleria Press. And actually I, I took back um, a treasured lens from, from, the, from the company that, uh, that published it um, initially, you know? And so, so I, was kind of, I was kind of set up to, 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 to release now. And, and actually I, I worked as the same designer as I did for, um, for treasured lens, Jan Morris, because he was, uh, he was so good, yes. Well, this is going to be a really good book, especially for anybody looking for uh, Christmas gifts. Uh, I would really hope that we can talk more at a later date uh, once the book is out and discuss maybe one or two of the, the challenges you had and uh, you know talk a little bit about that. Um, we have uh, published an article about the upcoming book so people are aware of it and uh, all the links for where to purchase it and so forth are in the articles. 
I mean, we could we could talk for hours about how you research, where you're going to go, how you plan, how many times you have to go back to the spot until you get the right shot because of lighting and all the conditions. I mean, as landscape photographers, that's part of it. And I think any landscape photographer looking at any one of these books is going to look at this and realize, wow, you know, you just don't walk up to this plant your tripod, take the picture and walk away. I mean, you've got to plan the time of day. You got to have the right weather. You got to hope that you have the right weather. You might have to come back and revisit it a couple of times. The challenges you faced, I, I, you know, have had to be really incredible. And I'm sure you have some wonderful stories about, you know, maybe people you've met along the way and the challenges and it's it's um, been a privilege and a pleasure to, to meet face to face, even if it's over Zoom right now. Your body of work and what you've accomplished, my hat is off to you, sir. You've done a magnificent job, and it's one of those must-have coffee table books, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Especially you know, as an American looking at our national parks, and I've never visited all 27 like you have. I've been to a lot of them, but. Uh, this accomplishment of yours is magnificent, and I can't wait to see what the monument project looks like. Thank you, Kevin. Actually, you know, for you, you, you were you were one of my my early supporters in the sense <laughs> that uh, um, when I, when I released Treasured Lands, you know, there was there was a limited edition, and you were actually one 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 of the. Uh, one hundred and something people who who bought the limited edition with with a slipcase that you saw. So I. Yeah. So I I'd, I'd like to to thank you for your for your early support and yes, uh, the um, the National Monument Project in particular it, it was particularly challenging because because there was very li little information about those lands you know unlike uh, unlike for for the national parks uh, and they the, so they the, those they they are, they, they are they are very remote lands you know for instance uh, next to the Grand Canyon National Park we have. Uh, um, Grand, Grand Canyon Parachant National Monument. Parachant is actually larger than the, than the Grand Canyon National Park, but within the entire park, there is not a single paved road. There is, a, and maybe there is a, a single restroom inside. You see, so, ah. so so you go in there, you know, and then you the, you, you 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 really you really have to. to to try to dig out the information because there's, there's no books, there's no rangers, there's no visitor centers, right? And then you're, you're all by myself. And then I'll, I'll just give you an, an anecdote about, uh, you know, uh, in the course of the, of the National Monument Project, which, which was only about three years, you know, driving around, I got flat tires four times. Four, wow. And from time to time, you know, in, in very remote locations. It's what it takes. So can I ask if you have another project on the horizon? I might have one, you know, so, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm eyeing actually uh, some, some lands which are even more obscure than the national monuments, you know. Really? Maybe at, at, the, at the request of the, of the Conservation Lands Foundation, you know, so they, 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 they told me that they might be interested for me to try to work on the, um, yeah, on, on some of the lands they are, they are interested in. So, so I might do that in the next few years. I have to see how it goes. With, Good. Uh, Good. Well, you know, hopefully, I'm sure you've suffered through this pandemic like, you know, I have, and to be able to do this project that you just did through the pandemic has you know, that's a pretty cool thing too um uh, hopefully we we won't be zooming next time we'll be sitting next to each other having a conversation so uh, yeah. i would really look forward to be, feel privileged to do that with you i know our readers will enjoy hearing your adventures and uh, i know a lot of them will enjoy your book if they haven't gotten it already and probably will be getting it and i think all, all of us look forward to your monuments book so you know, get out there and, and take some more pictures. So you, you're an inspiration to a lot of us, and I thank you for that. Well, so I'm, I'm very glad to, to hear that uh, that Treasure Lands has been useful to you. So oh, yeah. thank you again. Yeah.